everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to day three of the 2019 Digital Marketing Bootcamp, Ultimate Guide to Creating a Marketing Plan Based on Real Numbers. I'm really excited to be your host today. My name is Michelle. Steve is also here and will be helping us out with any of your questions throughout the webinar. I'll be going through a little intro and then David Reed will take you through his presentation and then at the end we will answer any of your questions that you might have. In case you're not familiar with Surefire and who we are, we are located in Northern Virginia and we help small businesses drive visibility through all channels on the web so they can continue to grow their business with ease. Our mission here is to educate businesses on a variety of topics to help you succeed and help the industry grow. We want to know who you are too, so let us know where you're joining us from today. You can do that by using the chat box or the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. And a few quick reminders before I pass it on over to David. You'll be getting a recording of this chat, and if you were on yesterday and the day before, you'll get that all next week on Monday. And like I mentioned earlier, you can ask us questions, make comments, et cetera, in the, the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. And also, because you are on the webinar with us right now, you've earned one ticket to be placed into the drawing of the Google Home Hub that we will be giving away at the end of this webinar. And if you attended either yesterday and Tuesday, that then you now have three tickets or two tickets. It depends on what you attended. Um, but that will better your chances at winning. So today we have David Reed, our Director of Sales and Digital Marketing Expert. He's got a great presentation for you all. So with that, I will pass it on over to David. Awesome. Thank you very much, Michelle. Appreciate the uh, introduction here. So wanted to uh, kind of walk you guys through a few different things this morning. And, and one of those is how the digital marketing landscape is changing in today's day and age, right? A number of years back, early 90s, really it was all about, you know, hey, do you, are you in the yellow pages? Do you have a double truck ad, right? Making sure that you have your presence there. Do you start with a letter A? Does you have a number in there? Making sure that you're the best placement you possibly can be. And what we're seeing, and I'm sure all of you guys are seeing this, is that there's a, a pretty big shift over the last few years, right? Now what we're seeing, that customer journey has a lot more touch points. It's not no longer someone just going in there and they're calling the first three names in the yellow pages, but now, you know, they may see a job sign or they might see a truck wrap and then they might go online and then they might see the things that you're doing on social media. They're probably going to check out your reviews that you have, look at the content and information that's out there. What we're seeing is that the consumers are spending at least or, or engaging at least 10 touch points before they actually contact a business, right? So it's really, really important for you as you're thinking about, hey, how do I generate more leads? How do I get the right people to contact me? You need to make sure that you're, you have a well-rounded digital footprint. And that's part of what we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about today. Now, part of the way that I describe our company for those of you guys who may or may not be familiar with what we do, there's really kind of three core elements of how we help contractors and, and small businesses. Uh, part of that is the services. So we actually help manage clients, uh, paid advertising. We help them manage their SEO, their social media. Um, and then what we've done is we've developed some technology that actually lays on top of all of those services to help us to really better understand how everything is performing, how we want to make adjustments and kind of tweaks. And then we've got a, a support person, a, what we call a digital marketing strategist that actually works with you to help make sure that you're generating the right return on investment. And um, some of you guys may or may not be aware of this, but actually when our company got started, Chris, the way we got started was actually him writing a book called Surefire Social. And in the book, it outlined, hey, you know, what? in order to be successful, you got to do these, you know, six, seven different things. Um, and that's really how the, the company evolved as, as we kind of grew was looking at, you know, hey, these are the best practices. These are the strategies that we've seen to be most successful. And, and really, you know, Chris's goal was just to be an educational resource. And then what we found out is that, you know, quite frankly, most contractors don't have the time, nor do they want to be an expert. Uh, in digital marketing. And so we kind of shifted and started taking on a lot of the, the technology and, and the support um, uh, components here. Now, one of the things that I'm going to talk to you guys about is about 
the focus, right, for the future, the next three, five years, right? That's really where we want to be positioning and where we want to be focusing. That's the, our CEO. That's his focus. And one of the big things that we talk about has to do with voice search and the changes that are happening there, right? number of years back, all it really was is, hey, do you have a website? Great, right? Then you started being concerned with mobile and, and social media and some of the platforms. And now what we're seeing is that there's this big shift in the technology where consumers are actually using voice search significantly more, right? And um, some stats to kind of give you guys some context there. Experts are anticipating that by 2020, which is only, uh, you know, 14, 15 months away, by 2020, 50% of all search is going to be voice, right? There's been a 3,400% increase in voice searches over the last few years. And just so you guys have some context in terms of the volume that we're talking about here, every day, Google has 5.44 billion searches, right, on just the Google search platform, let alone Siri, let alone Amazon, let alone any of the other platforms that are out there, just Google, right? So we're talking about a pretty massive shift in terms of that content. And so what we want to do is make sure that you guys are prepared for that. And that's why we hold these webinars. And that's why we focus so much on, on creating great educational content. One of the other big shifts that we see, I was just on the phone with a, a great uh, bath guy earlier this morning, had a, a really wonderful conversation with him. Richard, if you're on, shout out to you. Um, and one of the things that we talked about was that, you know, he's got a current guy and he's running his ads and he's doing some digital stuff for him. But he's not really getting the right quality out of the, the marketing and, and the lead that he's doing. And part of what I explained to him is that, you know, a big challenge that we see for contractors and, and businesses is that most of the marketing companies that are out there typically focus on what's called short tail keywords, right? They're typically three words or less, roofing contractor, Denver, uh, HVAC, Atlanta, uh, you know, remodeling in, you know, Washington, D.C., right? Very short, very generic, right? And the problem with that sort of a strategy, while, hey, it sounds good because, wow, there's lots of people that are searching for those phrases, we tend to see that it doesn't perform as well. It tends to bring a little bit more tire kickers, right? What we found is that focusing on long tail actually performs better. And I'll give you guys an analogy here, right? So um, I'm a car guy. Right. So I just bought a new car last year uh, or a new to me car. Uh, and when I was shopping, originally I knew I want a white car and I want four doors. Right. That was my criteria. And then as I got further along in my purchasing process, I know that I want a white car with four doors, with black interior, with a sunroof. That's a Mercedes or BMW or, you know, Audi or whatever. And I know I want 400 horsepower and I want tons of safety features. Just kidding. No safety features, just the horsepower. And so it's really, you know, you, you kind of get the gist here of as you're getting farther along in your purchasing process, right, you're going to get more specific in the types of things that you're searching for. And so if all of the phrases and the terms that your marketing company is targeting is all short, you're just going to end up you know, with a bunch of tire kickers, right? Not to say that you shouldn't target them at all, right? You definitely want to target them, but you need to incorporate a strategy that's going to target longer tail search phrases. And we see that that ends up being 50% or more of the overall searches that are out there, right? The problem is, honestly, it just takes a lot of time to research and figure out what all those variables are. And, and most, you know, companies don't want to take the time or the energy, right? Um, so, you know, with a, a company like Surefire, where we actually understand the industry, we know the, you know, market, we have a better understanding of what those terms are and, and what they're performing. And if you guys want some, you know, personal advice or, or some strategies on this, I'm happy to sit down with you and, and go through some of the stuff. You just leave a comment on our marketing team will get me in touch with you. One of the other things that we see that's kind of a big challenge for a lot of businesses is uh, reviews right? Um, everybody wants them and, and a lot of people have difficulty actually gaining them. Um, what some people may or may not be aware of is that 22% of consumers won't even consider using you if you have one negative review. Um, and the stat actually goes a little bit farther in this study. 
where it says if you have more than four negative reviews, 70% of people won't consider using you, right? So it's really, really important that you saturate your online presence with the reviews. Um, and I'll, I, I, there, another strategy I would highly recommend is diversifying your reviews across multiple platforms because I've seen people get hung out to dry because they focus all their energy on Angie's List and then someone goes and writes a negative review on Yelp. Right. So you got to get on all of the major platforms and we can talk about which ones you want to prioritize based on your industry. But Google, Yelp, Facebook, Angie's List, depending on the market, House also, those are all really, really strong platforms. Everybody definitely wants to be paying attention to. Right. Now, I know that the digital marketing space is changing constantly. We've talked about, you know, the landscape. We talked about the technology and all these adjustments that are happening. But there are four key elements that everyone has to abide by, right? These are evergreen strategies that will not be changing, right? If you think of if you think of optimi- like search engine optimization, everyone's like, how do I get to page one of Google, right? Think of search engine optimization as giving the search engines confidence that you are the right choice. And everything that you're doing is giving them confidence that you're the best choice, right? So when we talk about recency here, right, if you have not created content or or made updates or or made any adjustments in the last six months, you are not giving the search engines confidence that you are the right choice, right? If if CNN, Fox, MSNBC, if they stop creating content for six months, people are not going to go to those platforms anymore. Right. So when you think of how do I improve, how do I, you know, uh, increase my results, we need to make sure that we're creating not only recent, but also consistent content. Right. Another key element, proximity. If you are in Denver, you don't want to generate leads in Washington, D.C. Right. And consumers don't want to find you. And, you know, if if they're in Washington, D.C. and you're in Denver. So it's really, really important that the content and the information that you have on your website starts to provide some context into where you work and what you do. And so there's some different clues. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second here. Another key area is relevance. And I'm going to give you guys a real simple example that I see this error made on probably 90% of the contractors that we talk to. Right. So I give you two scenarios. Right. So Google has contractor A and contractor B and contractor A has a website and they have a services section that talk about roofing, siding, windows, additions, kitchens, bath, HVAC, plumbing. And then you've got another site and they've got one page that's dedicated towards HVAC repair or one page that's dedicated to roofing. If a customer is searching for HVAC repair that contractor B that has that one page is going to be far more relevant to what that consumer is looking for. And therefore, they have a much, much better chance of being picked by the search engines, giving the search engines confident that when they display your business, that you're the right choice, right? Last thing here is prominence. Primarily has to do with reviews, other indicators, social content, things like that. You know, really, you know, we are past the point. I know there's still a few businesses out there that, oh, I don't want to ask for reviews because I don't want to, you know, uh, I I don't want to give, you know, that 1% of my customer base that might be unhappy that opportunity to generate to write a negative review. We're really past that point. You you have to have a process to acquire reviews in today's day and age. It, It is only a matter of time. Like I had a gentleman at a conference earlier this year, came up to me, said, hey, you know what? I got an issue. I've got uh, 200 reviews on Angie's List and had three reviews on Yelp. Someone wrote a negative review on Yelp. That negative review was one star, which brought his overall rating because he only had three down to three stars. And then a customer that he had just closed for a $70,000 job Uh, saw that review, ended up canceling the job because of what was said, right? So if he had had 20 or 30 reviews or 100 reviews on Yelp like he did on Angie's List, he would have been fine, right? But because he ignored that platform or maybe not ignored but didn't place as much urgency on that platform, it really ended up hurting him. So 
we talk about online presence, right, and how to increase our online presence so that, you know, homeowners are searching. What we want to do is focus on increasing that digital footprint, right? Think of think of Google as a library, right? And what we're trying to do is put more books on the shelf so that more people have a better opportunity of finding you versus that competitor. So if you just have a website, that's one book. Right? You got a Yelp profile, it's another book. You got a house profile, you got uh, you know, uh next door, do you have YouTube videos? All of this is just more real estate that you're taking up that's increasing that online presence. And so when we talk about our strategies and the systems that we found to be most successful, it's looking at a bunch of different areas, right? And that's always been kind of the surefire strategy. Right. Even from the beginning, I mentioned Chris when when he wrote his book, it was always you got to do these five or six different things in a coordinated way. And so we pulled all of those things into our platform, into our local market and cloud to really help us to better understand how everything is performing and, and really ultimately how we can make adjustments to it. Right now, before I get into some of the specifics of how we pull that data in, I wanted to highlight a couple other areas that we see are, are common problems for people and really make sure that we're providing a ton of value for you guys. So uh, Comfort Solutions, great company. Talked to them a couple of times uh, before, you know, nice layout in, in terms of how they have their website laid out. Big thing here, making sure that you've got, you know, a large, easy to use phone number for people to contact you. I prefer it when we have different colors so that we're attracting a little bit more attention, right? We've got information on why us, which, you know, big thing, maybe not, not everybody's aware of this, but typically when we look at the analytics data of our client site, the about us page is typically the second or third most viewed page on all of our websites, right? So it's really, really important that you have a little bit of that personality in there um, because a lot of homeowners really do want to connect with you on that, right? So they have a nice layout. They've got some good information here. Part of the challenge that I would say with this is, so they've got, we talked about proximity, right? Where, okay, they're in Alexandria, Virginia, they're talking about, you know, air conditioning, service, AC replacement, right? So we're trying to get that relevancy in here, right? The the part that I see that's missing in this equation is the recency, right? If we just create this page one time and we never come back to this page, we're not constantly adding value. And so there's some tools that I'm going to kind of share with you guys that help to improve that, right? One of the other things that we look at is something called schema. So some of you, I'm sure, have probably heard of this. Some of you probably have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So schema, I've got it I circled up there, schema.org. You can go to the website. It is a collaboration between all of the major search engines, Google, Yahoo, Bing, those platforms. And what they have done is they've made essentially call-outs. The way I kind of look at it is, they, they've given this code that, you know, us as developers can use on your website as, as a way to call out or, you know, kind of the way I explain it is highlight the section of the website that's important, right? So we're, think of this as a highlighter to say, hey, Google, pay attention to this because, you know, we talked about voice search is becoming more, more relevant and, and all of the, the changes and the adjustments in AI and, and technology and all the algorithm changes that they have, we, you know, Google wants to make it easier for them to read and interpret this data. And so this is one of those ways that allows them to do that. So if we are a roofing contractor, right, or an HVAC guy or a design build firm, there are tags that let you reference that to the search engine. And so that you can connect those dots. So it's really, really important that you talk to your current developer and make sure that you have references of schema on your website, right? It's called structured data. Again, if you have more specific questions or if you want, there's a real simple way that we can look at it with you guys. If you want us to take a look at it, we're happy to do that. Another massive problem, and this is probably one of the bigger challenges that we see for a lot of contractors, is... Uh, inconsistencies in what's called NAP data. So there's all these different directory listings, sites like Yelp, sites like 
Angie's List, Better Business Bureau, Google My Business, all these different profiles. Think of them as your digital yellow pages, right? And when you think of, let's, and let me kind of break this down in an analogy for you guys, right? So imagine you're going to go to dinner, right? And you, you're going to dinner with 10 people. And all 10 of those people give you a slightly different version of the name and a slightly different address and a different phone number. You're probably not going to feel all that confident that you're going to get to the right place, right? And, and when we go back to the search engines, right, what you're doing is giving them confidence when the search engines see, okay, I've got from Michaels and Son, which is, for those of you guys not familiar, massive, massive HVAC contractor, probably like $50 million a year, right? Um, they see they've got this number here, 6,000. Then they've got another one, number 6453. Then they've got another number. There's different spellings of the business name. Uh, there's di totally different addresses. When they see all those different variations, now Google, Yahoo, Bing, they're like, well, I don't know which one of these is right. You know, I'm going to not serve up this business. I'm going to serve up somebody else that has more consistent information. Right. And there are some simple ways for us to check this for you guys and kind of walk you through how to fix it, right? Those are just a couple real high-level things. Um, one of the things we'll do, you know, at the end of this is offer an opportunity for us to actually have one of the uh, guys on my team or girls on my team sit down with you, actually walk through some specific recommendations and some of our best practices on how to improve that. In our cloud, though, as we kind of jump through this, I want to walk through some real high-level um, strategies and, and some of the tools that we have within this program right, that we found to be really, really successful um, in, our, in our program. And part of the challenge that, that we see when we're talking with contractors is this concept that I like to talk of, of about too many cooks in the kitchen. Right. Where most of the digital marketing partners that we work with, uh, you know, uh, contractors that we work with, they have, you know, a friend of a friend that's, you know, a website guy. Right. And then they've got a, a girl in the office that does some social media. And then they've got, you know, a local guy who's doing some paid marketing for them. And then they've got another SEO guy and then they've got another review guy. Right. And so they've got all these different people that are implementing things for them. But everybody's got their own secret sauce, right? Everybody's got their own recipe. And if no one's working off the same list, it's going to be really, really hard for that meal to come out properly. And so that's part of why Surefire has put together, you know, our local marketing cloud so we can pull all of that data into one place so we can really understand how things are performing and ultimately how we want to make adjustments. Right. So let me show you guys a couple couple different tabs in here um, so you can see what this looks like. So in this program, what I'm looking at is within, let me expand this a little bit more. There you go. So in this program, what I'm looking at is in the last 90 days, this particular contractor has had just shy of 3,000 people come to his website. And from that, what we want to understand is, well, where are those people coming from? Right. If they're coming from, uh, you know, direct traffic here, that's probably they saw like a yard sign. They saw a, you know, a truck or, you know, they might have heard a, a radio campaign or something like that. And they just typed in our URL directly. Right. So that's not really a good indicator of how well your digital marketing is performing. Um, maybe it was our AdWords. Right. Things that we're doing with Google. Uh, could be, you know, other cam email campaigns that we might be doing, or it might be from social media. But really what we want to see is, are we getting our traffic from organic, right? That, that's really the best indicator as to how well things are ultimately performing for us. And um, so we pull all of this data in here uh, in, into your platform, make it easy for you guys to look at, and then make it easy for you to understand, you know, how well it's actually performing. Okay, of the almost 3,000 people, we've had a little over 700 actually contact us. So those are phone calls and form submissions. You know, we, we don't want, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that talk, hey, we got you a bunch of clicks. We got you a bunch of traffic to your website. It doesn't really do anybody any good. It doesn't pay the bills, right? It's, it's the leads. That's what pays the bills, right? And so we want to make sure that we're on track there. 
In this tool, I can also see what sort of terms we're actually showing up for. So I am almost certain that everyone is probably familiar and most of you have probably already used pay per lead companies. There's a big one, maybe or maybe not, starts with the home. Um, and part of the challenge that we hear from those contractors that have utilized that particular company before is that there tends to be issues with the quality, right? Because when you're getting the lead and three people or 10 people or 15 people are also getting that lead, it makes it difficult, right? It becomes a, a price conversation. And so what we want to do here is kind of understand what are the terms that our business is actually showing up for? Because if we're getting a bunch of term, you know, people that are tire kickers, we don't want to waste our time with them, right? We want to focus on the, the priorities here. So this helps us to start to get a better sense of where we're getting our traffic from and how we might want to make adjustments to our um, digital marketing campaign to improve that return on investment, right? So in this program, I can also track what myself and what my competitors are doing. So this gives us kind of a better idea on, you know, hey, what are some of the other guys that, that we run into on a regular basis? What are they, you know, targeting? Are there any opportunities for improvement? Are there any things that we might want to focus on? Like uh, I had a guy last year um, that a competitor to him, a manufacturer competitor to him, had a huge failure rate um, in this particular area because some weather and, and some other things. And so with that knowledge, we then, you know, hammered those keywords and those phrases to really get some, some good quality conversion. And this was something we learned by tracking some of his competitors and seeing that they were running into this particular issue, right? Over on the right-hand side, I talk, we talked a little bit about the directory listing portion, all those inconsistencies. This pulls in all of the directory listings uh, to make sure that everything's all consistent as well as pulling in all of our different reviews. Right. Making sure that Jeff is doing a great job. Right. We want to see that, you know, hey, is, you know, Jeff representing the brand the way it should be? Or, you know, it, did he, you know, are, are people saying, hey, they recommend us or, you know, that we, you know, damage something on the property. Right. So it starts to give us some sort of insights into, you know, what the online perception of the brand is and how we might want to make adjustments to our campaign. Right. And in here, in our local marketing cloud, we've got tons of different tabs. We won't go into all of them because, you know, quite frankly, we'll be here for a while. Uh, next one I wanted to jump through was the leads component here. Right. So in this lead section, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are utilizing, um, you know, different CRM systems and, and different programs like that. What this tool allows us to do is it allows us to pull in data from the people that are actually contacting us. And then through our program, we actually give push notification for leads. So with most of the contractors we work with, you know, they've got somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, one to 200 emails that they're receiving each, you know, each day. With our program, we're pulling all of those in um, to make sure that we're getting our, our opportunities as quickly as possible and responding to them. As we know, lead, you know, speed lead is really, really important. I think the stat from Market Sharp was, uh, I want to say our opportunity to book the meeting decreases by like 31% after five minutes of, of not contacting them. So we want to make sure that we've got that opportunity to contact them as quickly as possible. And this gives us push notification to those leads to make sure that we get the best opportunity. Right? Um, through this tool, we can also break down, you know, where our lead source is coming from, right? Are they coming from uh, form fills? Are they coming from phone calls? I can also see how many of those phone calls are organic versus, let's say, our paid marketing. And then those phone calls are actually recorded. So I can make sure, you know, hey, is is Mary answering the phone, you know, correctly, or you know, do we do we need to make some adjustments, right, in terms of the positioning that we have? So we pull in all that data and, and make sure that uh, we understand ultimately how everything is performing. We also, as I mentioned, pull in reviews so we can see what sort of things people are saying about us, 
I mentioned, we can highlight here all the reviews that rec say recommended or, you know, maybe I want to look at, uh, we found Jeff earlier. Let's see if we can find Jeff again. Here he is. So, hey, is, is Jeff doing a good job? Right. So five star, five star, five star. It looks like Jeff's doing all right. Right. So everything that mentioned his name is all positive. Through this tool, I can also respond to reviews as well as acquire reviews. Big thing to note, everybody, for an acquisition strategy to acquire more reviews, big key is requesting a review within 48 hours of your job being completed. When you wait longer than 48 hours, we tend to see a pretty significant decrease in the response rate. I would also highly, highly recommend giving them one or two platforms. Don't give them more than that. Um, we found that when you overwhelm them with options, just like if you overwhelm them with options in the home, tends to reduce our, uh, our response rate, right? Another big one that I want to show a lot of people, you know, are, are utilizing AdWords and through our tool, we can actually launch and track how everything is performing through our campaign. So we can see how many people are actually coming to the website, how many people are clicking on our ads and how many people are actually converting into those opportunities. Um, so we get some really solid metrics in here in terms of how our, our program is performing and how we want to make adjustments to those campaigns, right? Um, now, uh, if there are any questions, there's a, a few more tabs that we can go into, but just in, in the interest of time, I know everybody's got a busy schedule here. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to uh, let me know or chat those in the comment section below. Um, I believe we're going to enter in a poll right now for you guys. As I mentioned, if you want to have a private webinar with one of our digital marketing experts where we're going to walk you through three or four of these strategies to help you to improve your online presence, actually generate higher quality leads, just select one of those days or uh, select email and, and one of my team members will reach out and, and reschedule. Just to kind of give you guys high level some of the things we go over, uh, we had a, a Denver-based contractor last year went through our, our program and actually uh, when he crunched his numbers for 2017, generated 83 jobs and a little over $1.3 million. So we're going to walk you through with the specific steps that we took to help that guy. Uh, we had another guy in, in Cincinnati uh, earlier in the year that uh, brand new business and when he started with us you know we basically helped him create everything from scratch improve his online presence actually helped him generate 27 Google reviews within the first few months of the program so awesome that's great information David thank you so much um, we actually do have some questions from the audience so while everyone's still answering the poll we will go over those questions um, so Robert asked he actually has a couple questions. What if you have multiple locations um, and what if you use different phone numbers for different campaigns? It's a great question. Absolutely, you want to implement multiple uh, phone numbers for different campaigns. Uh, we have some clients that have over 30 different tracking numbers uh, through this system. So definitely recommend that because you want to understand what the return on investment is for each one of those campaigns. Uh, but we can segment that out through our cloud, no problem. Um, as well as multiple locations. In reference to the directory listings component, we can actually, uh, we've got a bunch of brands that have, uh, you know, we've got one that's got 300 locations, and we can compartmentalize those by region, um, as well as there's there's other categories. So let's say you, you can have an overall directory listing score, and then you break that down by the various different states or regions that you have, and then you can drill down to the individual level. But those are all definite things you want to get. You know, you definitely want your directory listings managed for each one of those locations, and we can certainly make that easy with the cloud. Great. Uh, the next question we have here is from Ruth, and she wants to know, how do you get rid of old addresses on the search engine? Yeah, that's a, a frustrating one for a lot of businesses. Um, the something that, that, you know, quite frankly, most companies struggle with. So you're definitely not alone. Uh, what we do is uh, our program, we actually have a contract with 70 of the top 
directory listing sites uh, across the web. And so once you come into our cloud and come into our platform uh, and we put your information in our system, those 70 sites are contractually obligated to update your information in their system within 72 hours. And our program also supports duplicate suppression. So if you have uh, extra listings, one of the more common problems is a uh, Facebook page. You might have like an intern that comes in and creates a Facebook page uh, and then they leave and you no longer have access to it. We have ways to, to be able to suppress all that. Great. Um, we actually have another question from Robert. Um, he wants to know, can you look at goals for search terms? For example, search term conversion rate, just seeing quantity doesn't tell you enough. Yes, so there are um, specifics. So this specific tool is is meant more from a high level. If you wanted to get into those specifics with AdWords, you're definitely going to get that data. Uh, unfortunately, Google hides that specific uh, information in um, for organic. So you'll see if you not to get super technical because like five percent of people are going to get this, but um, Google actually, uh, if you look at your keyword data, they're going to have not provided for about 80 to 85 percent of your traffic. Um, essentially, they're making it difficult for you to get that data and pushing people to use AdWords. Um, so if you're running an AdWord campaign, we'll be able to pull that data in and be able to look at keyword performance by goals. Um, to take it another step further, seems how, you know seems like you're pretty tech savvy. One of the things that we can do is actually integrate with certain systems to see that Mrs. Jones actually clicked on this keyword. Um, she followed along these pages, ended up calling into the business, and then ended up spending twelve thousand um, dollars. So we, we're building out a system with that. We have it with a few operating systems, but uh, but it's a, a as you can imagine a, a work in progress. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your great questions, and thank you, David, for your answers. Um, we are going to move on to the Google Home Hub winner. So today's lucky recipient of the Google Home Hub is Melissa Ellis. Congratulations, Melissa. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address, and we will ship that right out to you. And huge thanks to David and to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us for either one, two, or all three days of our 2019 Contractors Marketing Planning Bootcamp. We hope you learned something new, and we look forward to seeing you online soon. So please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. We love checking out the topics you suggest when we plan out our webinar schedule. Thank you and have a great day.